Welcome to the state of Mount Clements. Uh, I'm welcoming, welcoming you on behalf of the Macomb County Chamber. My name is Greg Jacob. I am a board member at the Chamber and I work for Henry Ford Macomb Hospital. We are one of the sponsors today and we have several other sponsors who are AT&T, Beaumont Health, Hen Henry Ford Macomb, United Shore Baseball League and Oakland University. We have representatives from a couple of those sponsors. So uh, if, uh, if you're going to speak for your sponsorship, please come up and introduce yourself. I see Teresa. Okay. <laughs> 60 seconds. I've got a lot to talk about. So uh, I am the Vice President of Groups and Events at United Shore Professional Baseball League, or Jimmy John's Field, and we just wrapped up season four, which is amazing. How many of you have been to the ballpark? Thank you so much for supporting us. We really do appreciate that. And uh, wrapping up the fourth season, the Utica Unicorns are the champions for season four. So exciting game, if any of you were there, that was a come from behind win. <laughs> so um, talk. I want to talk a little bit about the baseball side. And I know that any of you that have um, heard me speak before or have been in contact with Andy know that when Andy started the league the the hope was just someday to get one of our players to advance to a minor league affiliate and uh, this season alone we advanced nine players yes thank you so over the four seasons, we have advanced 36 players to major league affiliates, which what that means is that the players have advanced and they are playing in the farm system for major league teams. So the next goal for those players and for the league is to see those players advance to actually playing for the major leagues or playing in a game. And we are really thrilled that one of our players, a Utica Unicorn player from 2017, is now playing for the Minnesota Twins. Mm -hmm. He's playing, he's currently playing. So if you watch the playoff game on Saturday, uh, Randy Dobnek is supposed to be pitching. He pitched in Detroit when the Twins uh, beat the Tigers. Um, which advanced them, <laughs> not, not a bash at the Tigers. Um, so thrilled that we've actually, there's so many minor league affiliates that never experienced their players advancing to the actual show. So we're super excited to have Randy playing for the Twins. Um, off season events, season is over. We have a craft beer festival, which is next weekend. So love it if you could join us for that. We have a not so spooky Halloween party the following weekend, which is on the 19th. Uh, opening day, May 8th. So we're excited to get the 2020 season off and running. Um, and if anyone is interested in like, how does my business, like how does my business grow from this? What can I do with the ball field? Let us know. We're happy to sponsor any corporate event you want to have there. Season tickets make perfect sense for thank yous for your employees. There's just a lot of different things we can do on the business side. So I uh, hope to see you at the ballpark. Good morning. I'm Julie Dickdahl, and I'm the executive director for Oakland University here in Macomb County. Um, so I want to welcome you to our OU Anton Frankel Center. Uh, as many of you may know, Oakland University operates two educational sites in Macomb County. We're part of the Macomb University Center, and then we opened the doors to this facility here in 2011. Um, I really just want to highlight on what we've been doing in the last year. Uh, last year, we launched four accelerated degree completion programs at this location in management, marketing, human resources management, and information technology. The reason why we did that is we wanted to serve the needs of adult learners in Macomb County. We know that there are about 65% of our residents that have some college but no degree. 
And these programs are designed specifically with adults in need, where all of the classes are delivered in an eight-week format. Half of, the half of the content is delivered in the classroom, the other cl half online. So it's been really successful. And what we've seen, a 21% increase in enrollment at this location this year. So we're really, really excited about that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to highlight on is everything that Oakland University does to be a good community partner here in Macomb County and specifically here in Mount Clemens. We sponsor a number of different um, community events like the Let's Move Festival, we get involved in chamber events, um, but we don't just sponsor with our dollars, we participate, we show up and we bring our OU contingent. Our, um, I guess our signature event is the Macomb County Santa Parade where we have 300 Oakland University students and alumni, faculty and staff show out with us every single year and march in the parade and pass out candy. But what we do is we try to take that as an opportunity for our OU Golden Grizzlies to give back to our community. So three years ago, we partnered with the Macomb, uh, Macomb Food Program and we held a food drive. That year, we brought in 400 pounds of food the next year, 1,200 pounds of food to support the Macomb Food Program. Last year, the mayor and I teamed up and we hosted a community-wide food drive, and I am proud to say that we donated nearly 4,000 pounds of food to the Macomb Food Program. <laughs> this year, we're doing it again. We're hoping for something even bigger and better. So we have an Oakland University table at the display tables in the back. Please stop by and pick up a flyer. Um, our food drive is gonna run from November 11th to the 21st. Uh, so far, we have about 15 businesses in the Mount Clemens area that will be participating, holding their own food drive that will contribute to our overall, overall numbers. And you can participate in a number of ways. You can donate food at any one of the locations that are holding the food drive, or you can hold your own food drive. So this flyer has a little more information on it and contact information for our Director of Enrollment and Community Engagement. Just contact him and he'll get you hooked up. And then finally, we want you to stay connected to us. So every year we publish a magazine called the Macomb County Focus and we highlight all of the different initiatives that we have out in the county. We highlight our students and their success and what we're doing that's new and exciting with academic programs. So please pick up a copy of this, and if you want to get on our distribution list, email Brian, whose name is on this flyer. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Julie, thank you, Teresa. And on behalf of Henry Ford Macomb Hospital, I just want to remind you that uh, you know us for heart care, for cancer care, for stroke care, we're all about, but we're also all about keeping you healthy out in, in the community where you live. And one of the ways we do that is through our EAP, Employee Assistance Program. Uh, if you'd like more information about that, about keeping your employees healthy and productive, you can see, you can see Dave Darmetko, who's at our table. Dave is the tall, handsome guy there by the door. And he can give you information about how we can keep your uh, employees healthy and on the job. And with that, I will start, or I will we'll go to our main event, which is the state of the city of Mount Clements, presented by Mayor Barb Dempsey. Okay. okay, can everybody hear me? I have this mic on, I'm gonna put this one down a little bit, okay. First of all, I'm a little disappointed that my music wasn't played. I asked for Bruno Mars, Uptown Funk, but <laughs> what happened, you know? I was all ready to come in and do the thing, you know? <laughs> so I guess I'll have to try my best to keep you awake this morning. So Pete, stay awake. If you start, you know what? Hey, if it gets too boring, give me the high sign, okay? And I can change. So, good morning, everybody. Okay, thanks. Greg for inter the introduction and I want to thank all of you for joining us today on this wonderful bright brisk crisp autumn day 
and it's Friday. You know, this is impressive, everybody coming out on a Friday. <laughs> you know, wow. Uh, before I begin, let me first thank the Macomb County Chamber for sponsoring this event today. Thank you very much. I'd also like to thank Oakland University for hosting us today. Julie, you did a great job here with your little ad and PR work. We do great work. They do great work here, and they're great people to work with. We also have some state and local officials in the audience, and I'd like to introduce them. Of course, Senator Pete Lucido in the back. <laughs> Deputy County Execu uh, Executive Mark Delden. <laughs> the Village of New Haven President Chris Dilbert. <laughs> Our County Treasurer Larry Rocco. And we have representatives um, from uh, Congressman Peter's office, Kevin Hart, there he is. <laughs> and from District 10, a Senator um, Mike McDonald, his director, Phil Rode. <laughs> and did I miss anyone else? We're all dignitaries, so you know. <laughs> but we've got to name them. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Anthony. I'm sorry, Anthony's from the Road Commission. Public, Public, Public Works. Okay. <laughs> Candace Miller had two things to do today, so Anthony drew the lucky straw. What can I say? <laughs> um, okay, let me make sure I have everything in order here. All right. Mount Cummins has displayed a strong sense of community since it was founded more than 200 years ago. Hundreds of residents volunteer their times and talents for our city's boards, committees, and commission, all working to improve the city's services, beautify the city, maintain our city history for all who live here now and for those who will live here in the future. We couldn't do what we do without our volunteers. They work tirelessly to improve the quality of life in our city by enhancing the sense of community. Each year, our city takes pride in honoring those residents and businesses that have made Mount Clemens a better place to live through exemplary position, positive uh, contributions. We consider these gems our local treasures. Our 2019 Local Treasure Award recipient is Nancy Donahue. Nancy, <laughs> right here. Oh, they're showing pictures, great. I didn't know what they were gonna do here, okay. Nancy is a longtime resident of Mount Clemens and has always been active in the community. She served on many projects throughout the years as a member and an officer of the Beautification and the Historical Commissions. Please join me in recognizing her efforts to beautify Mount Clemens and preserve our history. In addition to the countless volunteers, including Nancy, the dedicated people, who work for our city, do incredible things for our city. Without them, we wouldn't have critical public services like our snow removal, fire prevention, first responders, which they're also here today, thank you, um, animal control, county development, um, community development, inspections, blight control, cord, uh, code enforcement, road repair, wastewater and water filtration plants, dial-a-ride, election administrations, street sweeping, park maintenance, and tree trimming. And I'm tired after that, <laughs> all that work. Whoa. They continuously work to provide the best service possible to our residents, business, and visitors with our precious financial resources. All with only 58 employees, 58 full-time employees for the city. Please join me in recognizing the members of our city commission, several of whom who are here with us today. We have Commissioner Roger Button, <laughs> Laura Kropp, and Laura Fournier. Also city commissioners Ron Campbell and Denise Menser, um, who were unable to join us today. Sadly, we lost uh, Bill Sonny Ford in September. <clears throat> he was a tremendous asset to the community and will be deeply missed. I'd like to take a special minute to acknowledge Roger Bunton. 
After eight years of dedicated service, his tenure on our city commission will end in just a few short weeks. We'll be sad to see him leave, but his presence in all of the other community projects will continue to be felt. Please join me in wishing him well and thanking him for the many years of service. Stand up. I'd also like to acknowledge the members of our city administrative team. Interim city manage, hold our applause. <laughs> Till the end. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> uh, interim city manager Lisa Borges and assistant city manager and public service director Jeff Wood. Finance director and treasurer Cliff Mason, who just recently joined us in April, and he is a welcome addition to the team. Community Development Director Brian Tingley, Utilities Supervisor Jay Peck, and Lenny, I'm going to say this right, <laughs> Lenny Bertrand, is that right? <laughs> okay. Um, Human Resource Director Sarah Price, Deputy City Clerk Kathy Martin, and Jennifer Jo, <laughs> you're the one I'm going to miss up, Jennifer Gelodi uh, from the City Manager's Office. All were key contributors to this event today. City Attorney Mike Murray and Jim Navarra. Senior Producer Pat Lindeberry and Producer Darren Roberts with the award-winning Macomb Cable Network. Steve Saff Jr., the Chairman of our DDA Board of Directors and Michelle Weiss, the DDA Marketing Coordinator. <sighs> Kyle Sedell, Scott um, Lockwood and Wayne Emke from our engineering firm, Anderson, Eckstein, and Westrick are here. And I'd also like to extend a very special thank you to Oakland University's Patty Georgievich for assisting us today and keeping me on track. She's right there. <laughs> <laughs> Please join me for a special round of applause now for all those who are working on our behalf and always seem to go the extra mile for us. We are so proud of our heritage here in Mount Clemens, and in 2018, we had the honor and the privilege to ce of celebrating 200 years of our fine city. We planned several festive events to celebrate the city's bicentennial in style. By doing so, we revisited most of the best times in our city's storied past. Our first trip back paid tribute to the exciting Prohibition era in the city of Mount Clemens at the Bootleggers Ball where all our local flappers and gangsters danced the night away at the Emerald Theater. Next, the ladies of Mount Clemens gathered at the Emerald Theater, donning their best afternoon tea attire for the elegant Victory Tea and Fashion Show. And when the year drew to a close, our riverfront truly sparkled for the holidays as over 20 local groups and families sponsored and decorated a Christmas tree for the Mount Clemens Tinsel Tour. Because of the popular demand, we hope to make the Tinsel Tour a yearly Yuletide tradition. So look for the return of Tinsel Tour this December. Now, let's get back to the present. Let's talk about the tremendous progress the city has made since I spoke to you in 2017. Our city's financial outlook is brighter than it's been in well over a decade. With the balanced budget, we've been able to pay down a significant portion of our long-term debt. We've also continued to realize savings from the increase in our bond rating. On a positive note, the property values in Mount Clemens have been steadily increasing. Our city assessor's office reports 10.5% increase in residential property values which is the fourth highest in Macomb County in 2019. Although the outlook is better, we're still receiving less revenue sharing from the state and continue to do more with less. I know, I want to acknowledge that this is in part because the efforts of our staff as well as a testament to sound financial decisions that continue to be made by our local officials and the administrative team. Regarding revenue sharing, the monies we receive are directly tied to our population. And next year is the 2020 census. I can't stress enough on how important it is for every resident to be counted. 
the population of our city provides the basis for reportioning congressional seats and redistricting and determines the amount of federal funds, grants, and support grants and support that states, counties, and communities receive. And to make and to make response uh, responding easier, you'll be able to do your census online now. So please keep an eye out for more information for the 2020 census, and we're all counting on you. There is a there is a momentum gaining speed in the city. It's a it's a momentum that happens from ground up, from major repairs in the infrastructure to the advancement in technology. Mount Clemens is going places and we're not going to slow down. Our city departments have never been stronger with the expert leadership and new ideas. Yes, we're moving forward full speed ahead with exciting developments that will take us boldly into our future. Our road to, ground, our road to growth begins appropriately with the Department of Public Work Services. If you've driven down Harrington recently, you undoubtedly, undoubtedly experienced much smoother rides since the completion of the road pavement project this summer. This $1.4 million project was funded by a grant from the Surface Transportation Program with a mere 18% match from the city funds. Additional STP grants in the amount of $1.7 million will also fund a concrete joint replacement and partial reconstruction of Dickinson Road from northbound Gratiot to Avery. And our roads aren't the only things benefiting from grants. The city was awarded a TAP grant for improvements in our downtown, including crosswalk replacement, ADA ramps, and streetscape work. This will make walking downtown much easier. And while we're taking a walk in our beautiful downtown, take a look at one of its centerpieces, the downtown fountain. It has a whole new look of a gorgeous stone overlay. It's a perfect spot to sit down for a break in the afternoon. And when day turns into night, enjoy the new LED lighting on all of our downtown trees. Our utilities department began the process of replacing our oldest residential meters in an effort to update the way the city reads its meters. This is approximately 85% completed and it will be completed by the end of 2019. Deutsch, uh, Deutsch Environmental completed cleaning and televising of all city sanitary and combined sewers to improve the city's infrastructure maintenance activities. Our utility department has made more than a million dollars in upgrades to its equipment. At the wastewater treatment plant, a full refurbishment to existing sand filters was just completed. This will help to provide clearer, cleaner product leaving the facility. And the new ozone system for the water filtration plant is expected to be in service sometime in the next 30 days. We're making advances in technology too. About a year ago, we implemented a new software system so all processes are completed on the same platform. Building permits, water bills, HR, payroll, accounting and assessing are now connected and the data flows between the divisions. Residents can view their current tax and utility bills, review past history, make online payments through the BSNA website. We have also integrated Invoice Cloud, offering customers greater flexibility to view and pay their bills. This service allows features such as pay by text, automatic payment, and paperless billing. And for more and more, and more and more people utilize the Park Mobile app, which allows for a quick and easy way to pay for parking with your cell phone when you come downtown during the day. So if anybody needs to use it right now, we have, oh, okay. Um, and don't forget, parking is free after 4 p.m. and every day, uh, every Saturday and Sunday, all day. Within the last year, the city has unveiled our new website that offers information in a more readable format. The pictures on the home page are from residents and visitors. So if you have a special shot of Mount Clemens you'd like to share, we'd love to showcase it. On our website, we have the capabilities to post emergency notifications and send the information via email. If you're interested in the service, please sign up on our website. 
We continue to connect to residents and visitors of Mount Clemens through our Facebook page. Like us on Facebook for the latest information, emergency, and meeting dates. With regards to upgrade, upgraded technology, our fire department has had upgrades to its reporting software to be in compliance with other entities in Macomb County. And the utilities department has had upgrades to its monitoring software as well. No doubt our administration recognizes the need to make equipment and technology upgrades as necessary to operate more efficiently and to do a better and to better serve our customers. All of the advancements we've made will set the stage to keep us moving forward in the future. Take a drink. <laughs> Now my mouth won't stick. <laughs> families are a priority in Mount Clemens, and we take pride in providing clean, fun-filled parks for families to enjoy together and make lasting memories. Take Shadyside Park, for example. Shadyside was the recipient of nearly 100000 in CBDG monies for new playground equipment and a new basketball court. The Mount Clemens Goodfellows also provided a generous donation, including a swing set and a bench to make our renovations complete. These new additions have provided a welcoming environment for all to enjoy. This park makeover was designed with input from our residents who had several suggestions and ideas on what they would like to see happen in the park. And Shadyside Park isn't the only park to receive upgrades. The Weir family generously donated a circa 1872 steam engine that was once used during the mineral bath era. The street department restored and installed the engine along with a dedicated plaque in the Clemens Park. And through cooperative funding efforts, Rotary Park in downtown will receive a facelift in the near future. In fact, yesterday, all the Rotarians, instead of having a speaker, took a walk downtown around Rotary Park to see what needs to be done. So hopefully that will happen this year still. Along with input from the community, the city continuous, continuously seeks additional funding mechanisms for park improvements. The city is in the process of installing a brand new soccer field. Since soccer is such a popular sport, the redevelopment of a baseball diamond into a soccer field would serve many Mount Clemens families. The field at Memorial Park will be completed the next year. The next year. Another effort to expand activities with kids and their families and to build healthy communities is Project Play. In this collaboration with Advancing Macomb, families will be able to check out sports equipment at locations throughout the city so kids will get an opportunity to try new sports and spend time outdoors with their family and friends. The city is thrilled to see the Children's Hands-On Museum has chosen Mount Clemens as its home. It recently signed a lease with the old Artercraft building at 70 Macomb Place in, Mount, in downtown. And let me tell you, we are so excited that they have finally found a brick and mortar home. After eight years, <laughs> eight long years, many of them, many of those years they traveled around the communities uh, with their um, uh, various uh, projects and sites and, and that, but they finally, they finally found a home and it's right back here in Mount Clemens and it's going to be just a wonderful thing for downtown. We just can't wait and I think that um, we give a lot of credit to the people who stuck with it. Eight years is a long time for projects, but in reality sometimes it's not. It takes a lot of time and effort, so thank you for all those people who uh, continue to see the value of bringing it right here in Mount Clemens. Another effort to expand, oh, I, sorry, I did that already. Hmm, I ad-libbed and moved. <laughs> Our furry family members haven't been forgotten either. With the assistance of private donation, many upgrades were made to Binky Memorial Dog Park, including a novice dog exercise course, fence improvements, new signage, and park benches. And did you know that Mount Clemens Dog Park was the first self-contained dog park in Michigan. We're proud to open it to all residents in the area. And speaking of firsts, City of Mount Clemens became home to the Clinton River's first universal access kayak launch 
which opened this year at MacArthur Park. The Neil Dempsey kayak launch allows paddlers of all skill levels and ages to travel along the river, including those with disabilities. The project was funded with the help of the Clinton River Watershed Council, individuals, businesses, and a grant from the Michigan Economic Development Corp. We hope to continue to make improvements to this area with the help of a DNR trust fund grant for, re for the rebuild of Jones Street on, at MacArthur Park. Those paddling down the Clinton River get to see a wonderful art installment painted on the staircase leading down to the Clinton River at City Hall. This beautiful creation of fish swimming in a colorful body of water is just one of the four locations in Mount Clemens that have been enhanced by murals. And all those fish that are on those steps are fish that you can catch and find in the Clinton River and Lake St. Clair. The artist did uh, her research and decided that she would put fish that are um, in our area on there. And it's really cool if you haven't seen it. Come on down. I'd like to thank Advancing Macomb, Kaboom, and the Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Foundation Play Everywhere Grant for providing funds for the fish painting, the mural in the Cherry Street Alley, a compass-style hopscotch game at the YMCA, and, a picture, and picture frames at the Anton Art Center. Not only did paintings grace our city, but sculptures started popping up last fall along North and Southbound Gratiot as well as South Main Street. The Macomb Cultural Economic Partnership helped organize these art installations, which were rented by both businesses and private individuals to enhance the look of the city. I don't know about you, but I have, a, I have really grown to love the horse at Shadyside Park and the movement it conveys in its design. And if you haven't seen it, go down to Shadyside Park. The city performs all necessary public services to maintain the quality of life our residents with to, excuse me, let me start. The, the city performs all the necessary public services to maintain a quality of life for our residents with the tax dollars collected. As we've mentioned time and time again, because we are the county seat, 47% of our property in our community, almost half is non-taxable. These properties include governmental, nonprofits, religious establishments, schools, hospitals. In addition, when you pay your taxes, did you know that the average only 40, uh, on the average, only 41% of the payment goes to the city for the operating cost. The rest is split between other taxing entities. That means an average tax bill of around 2,500, just $1,000 goes to the funds for the vital public services you receive. Of the $1,000, please be aware that nearly half of that is budgeted for public safety which includes sheriff's office and the fire department that leaves a remaining that leaves a remaining half to support general government services and utilities our employees work hard to secure additional grants and we continue to work with county state federal elected officials in order to advocate for additional funding for local units <laughs> And, and an, another method of funding. <laughs> Did you get that? Did you get, oh. um, another funding, <laughs> another method of funding, in a sense, comes from the various partnerships we've has, we have established. Our city continues to work with several organizations and surrounding communities to maximize the financial resources we're entrusted with and demonstrate to our residents, Macomb County, and the state that we're making smart decisions to provide essential services to our community. For example, some examples for our, on the cooperation and um, cooperative efforts we have made uh, and our partners. One, for instance, is Advancing Macomb. And I think Diane's here today. Thank you. And I've spoken about uh, that earlier. Support from local civic organizations, including the Optimist Club, who built and installed little libraries throughout the city, the Rotary Club, Lions, Kiwanis, and Goodfellows. Our work with the Clinton River Watershed, which, as I mentioned, was instrumental in the kayak launch. Our active participation in MACRO, the Macomb Area Communities of Regional Opportunities. 14 local communities meet monthly to address regional issues and points of collaboration. 
Our award-winning Macomb Cable Network is a long-running cooperative between the city and the Mount Clemens School District. They recently completed a five-year conversion project upgrading cameras, computers, studio, and playback equipment, as well as a network from standard definition to high definition. And again, this year, our MC High School students received several state-level awards. Our Dial-A-Ride provides valuable transportation service to many Mount Clemens residents, and with the co cooperation of SMART, we will receive another 16 new passenger bus to replace one of our older buses. With grant monies, we have also been able to, ex with grant monies, we have also been able to expend, expand our senior shopper um, for better service uh, to the seniors in our community. The Macomb County Sheriff, Sheriff's Office provides police service to our community in an innovative cost-saving partnership, which dates back 14 years now. Also, we are one of the many Macomb communities to consolidate our public safety dispatch through Macomb County state-of-the-art contact center in Mount Clemens. We've welcomed several new businesses since we last spoke, and I want to recognize a few and thank them for choosing to invest in Mount Clemens. Pop Sweet and Treats, and the Nest Collaborative on Macomb Place, Planet Fitness and the Dollar Tree on Grosbeck, Dynamic Testing Solutions on Macomb Daily Drive. Just a few of the 20 new businesses that have joined the Mount Clemens community. Last year during our bicentennial, I had the opportunity to recognize businesses that had made Mount Clemens their home for 50, 60, 70, and even 100 years. Places like Krausnick's Carpet One Floor and Home, LaCroix Eye Care, and they are celebrating their 80th year this year. Miller Brothers, The Rec Bowl, Leslie Tire, Nickel and Saf, Tesmer Book Bindery. Again, these are but a few of the more than 30 businesses who have made Mount Clemens their home for decades. Our business owners and their employees are an integral part of what makes our city unique and special. I'd also like to recognize businesses and establishments that continue to invest in their, in their location in Mount Clemens. On Harrington, McLaren Hospital continues to develop its facilities. It's currently working on a state-of-the-art emergency room to meet the needs, the health needs of our community at large. On Grosbeck, Concord Tool had added 14,000 square foot addition and was also awarded $300,000 from the MEDC and the Michigan Strategic Fund for future capital and labor investments. On Elizabeth, Martha T. Berry recently expanded its facilities to better serve its patients. Our ambulance provider, MedStar, recently upgraded its fleet to include 50 new rigs and a helivac to better serve your, our community. Do we have that? It's in the mix. It's got to come now, though. Now. <laughs> this is where I get to do a little ad lib. No. Um, I had the opportunity, which was so exciting and so nerve wracking. A couple weeks ago, um, the MedStar decided to, have to um, showcase the new um, rigs that they received, 50 of them. And they had them all lined in a U shape out in Chesterfield at their facility. And the helivac, their helicopter, was in Troy at the airport. So, of course, the helicopter was coming in to, Clint, uh, to Chesterfield Township. And I had the opportunity, opportunity to ride in it. It was exciting. I was scared to death at first. <laughs> and if anybody could have seen me trying to get into this helicopter, <laughs> those pictures better not be up there. <laughs> that was not good. And I remember saying to the pilot, when we get there and land, please, please don't let me fall out of the helicopter. <laughs> it was, but it was so amazing and so exciting, so I can check that off of my bucket list. You know, that was great. Thank you so much, MedStar. And thank you for all the services you do. They are our paramedic providers for the city of Mount Clemens. And they do an excellent job. Do we get the helicopter in yet? <laughs> Okay, onward. I'm almost done, folks. 
I wish I had time to mention every business in Mount Clemens, but I bet you don't know. <laughs> uh, because they're, <laughs> they're, all, they're all so important to us. Please join me in congratulating all of our Mount Clemens business communities. We also encourage you to invite your family and friends to visit Mount Clemens. Have them join us on one of the many events held annually in Mount Clemens. Each year, more than 150,000 visitors attend events such as the Independent Day Fireworks, which brings thousands of people to downtown Mount Clemens to witness one of the premier fireworks display displays in southeastern Michigan and our state. <laughs> And with special thanks to our prime sponsors, Oakland University, the, Weber, the Wayne Weber Foundation, and the DDA. The Made in Michigan Show. The Made in Michigan Show, the Uptown Friday Night Concerts, and the Uptown Saturday Night Concerts, both which have been sponsored by local businesses and the DDA. The Halloween Spectacular coming up October 26th. Last year, over 5,000 children and their parents attended. So don't miss out on that fun. The Downtown Christmas Open House and Tree Lighting, which is Friday, November 22nd. The Anton Art Christmas Mart that runs from November 15th through December 22nd. Okay. The Mount Clemens presents the Macomb County Santa Parade in downtown Mount Clemens. I'm proud to say this will be our 44th annual parade. This year's Grand Marshal will be Jennifer Lynn Wilson from Channel 7. And she is also a Macomb County resident, and she grew up around Macomb County, so that's great to have hometown girl, county, hometown county girl. <laughs> <laughs> and please remember, the parade is on Saturday before Thanksgiving, so mark your calendar for November 23rd. And the New Year's Eve fireworks, the only fireworks display in Macomb County, and don't miss the children ringing in the new year at their own firework display earlier in the evening. This year's theme is Kids Night at the Museum. <laughs> Oh, there's a helicopter. Back, back. <laughs> well, it wasn't that quick. But I have to tell you, it only took 10 minutes from Troy to Chesterfield. That's quick. <laughs> there are many other events throughout the year, so, uh, year to attend as well. Next week on October 11th, come out and support the Mount Clemens High School football team at their homecoming game. And I did receive something here. Congratulations to our battling Baylor football team. They are off to a 4-1 start, the best start in decades. Ton uh, tonight they are at the Detroit Old Redford before hosting the Cornerstone next week at the annual homecoming game. A special congratula congratulations to Tayshawn, thank you, Tayshawn Peterson, who was voted the Detroit Free Press Defensive Player of the Week for week two of the high school football season. Also on uh, October 12th, the annual Columbus Day Parade in downtown Mount Clemens. Our award-winning Farmer's Market voted Best Farmer's Market in Macomb County by Metro Times three years in a row, hosts a variety of community events. You can find them in downtown on Wednesday throughout the summer and at the North River Road location on Friday and Saturdays from May through s November. In addition to all the events throughout the year, encourage your family and friends to take a tour of one of our historical landmarks and enjoy many events, enjoy many of the events that they have to offer. The Cracker House Museum, which was the first mayor's home in Mount Clemens, and no, I don't have a mayor's home. Um, <laughs> don't know what happened along the way, you know. <laughs> uh, the Michigan Transit Museum, which recently received a new addition, a 1923 DT&I caboose. Uh, and it also is where Thomas Edison learned the telegraph. And the Anton Art Center, which brings art, exhibits, and programs to the people of Macomb County. Be sure to stay tuned for exciting new projects as well. Specifically, we're proud that a national developer, ArtSpace, is exploring the second phase of an exciting project within the community. ArtSpace develops work-live space for local artists. We're hopeful it will ultimately occupy the historic St. Joe's Hospital building on North Avenue. What a great initiative to bring in new development to our city from a national developer, no less, while having the opportunity to repurpose a historical building. 
As mayor, I was able to help secure funding from the DTE Foundation to help cover the cost of the initial phase at no cost to the local taxpayers. And I was just told today that we have been granted full funding for the second phase of this project by the Community Foundation of Southeastern Michigan. Thank you, Phil. So that's really, it's really exciting because there's only three, three, yeah, there's only three phases to this. And with the help of Phil and our great grant writer here, Linda Curtsy Davis, she has been working so hard on this project. We want to give you a big applause because you do so much for Mount Clemens and that. And we love you. Okay. Let's see where I was here. Okay. <laughs> While I'm proud to share these updates, I caution that like many major development projects, nothing happens overnight. And we can contest to that with the museum. We will continue to pursue this project and others. I will do my part to encourage and seek out development that will enhance our community. I'm extremely proud to be part of our community. I hope that you've been reminded this morning of how lucky we are to call Mount Clemens our home. A small town has a, this, this small town has big things happening. While we are proud of our rich history over the last 200 years, together we are all working tirelessly to position Mount Clemens to be a strong community well into the future. It's my distinct honor and privilege to serve as your mayor, and thank you so much for paying attention to me today. <laughs> and I want everyone to have a wonderful day and a great weekend. So thank you again for coming out. Thank you, Mayor Dempsey, and congratulations on another great year in Mount Clements. We also like to leave a little time to hear from our elected officials and get an update on what's going on in Lansing and elsewhere. Please welcome State Senator Pete Lucido. Tough act to follow, Barb. <laughs> I'm glad you're still awake. Oh. Uh, good morning. It's still morning. And I want to thank Barb and the Chamber for having me because it's not every day I get down to Mount Clemens. For 33 years I practiced law at that courthouse. That hasn't changed. But what has changed is the dynamics here in Mount Clemens. Barb, thank you for your leadership of being the mayor and all of your staff and more importantly all the elected officials that have contributed to this county because it is our county seat and we're damn proud of it because we're resilient but we got true grit here in Macomb County, don't we? Is this thing even on? Nah, let that go, Barb. I'm loud enough. You know, I appreciate uh, my first term in office as the senator down here because, you know, this is where I spent more than half my life. Coming down here in the morning at about 7, going into Leo's Coney Island and, you know, taking part in some of the more festive things that are going on and at the time spending a whole day in the courthouse so really I've seen a transformation of entire county but in the city within it that makes me very proud I came down here at night with my own family because I was proud of where I did my work every day I was proud of the fact that these buildings now are occupied with my my college that I went to I'm an alumni from Oakland University and I'm damn proud of it so Welcome, Oakland, Oakland University. Okay, so elected officials, you're doing a great job, publicly, privately, whatever's going on. Macomb County is a wrecking ball at the Capitol. I got up there four years ago, if you can believe it, it feels like forever. But I got up there four years ago and I represented the 36th District as a House representative. And it was Shelby, Washington, Romeo, and Bruce. So having a feel for a small town like Romeo, like Bruce, but it was different. When I came 
full circle and took over the 8th district, which I'm damn proud to serve because it includes a place where I grew up, which is St. Clair Shores. It's like coming back home. It's like no other. When you're doing a parade and you see these people on the street that once called you Little Petey, and now you're walking there waving. And I expect all of you to be at the parade this next Saturday, not this Saturday, next Saturday, as Barb said, because it's part of my heritage. It's Columbus Day, so I always walk down here in the parade to celebrate my Italian heritage that I'm very proud of. Uh, having grandparents that came here from Italy as immigrants, Lord knows what they'd be saying to me today if they saw me as a state senator. Probably get the hell out of there before they hurt you. <laughs> but let me tell you what I'm, I, I, I see is, how do you do more with less like Mount Clemens? And I've had this discussion with the mayor. It's this. Almost half this town is nonprofit. What I mean by that is there's no tax paying entity, but services have to be delivered. We got to shovel snow, we got to fire, or we have to do uh, uh, the uh, police and the fire and, and everything else that goes with it. So when an ambulance is set for the county building because somebody got a raw deal and a divorce, at the end of the day, who's picking up the stiff? And it's got to be like we're doing more. I didn't mean it in that way. <laughs> but we're doing more. We're doing more in this city, which other cities can look at with less. And to her point, you damn right we got to have revenue sharing. And we got to get our fair share here in Macomb County. And we got to be a wrecking ball and a loud voice. Because without it, we're not bringing home the bacon to who we truly love and who it is that we serve. So. You know, what we had was a budget, and just to get you an update, it's almost $60 billion with a B. I want you to know 12 years ago, I'm sorry, 10 years ago, we were $12 billion less. So watch what happened. Almost $60 billion, we were really at $48 billion 10 years ago. But we lost 400,000 people in the state. So we have less population, $12 billion more, and we are doing what? How is this happening? It doesn't happen in any one of our families. And I was really taken back and disgusted by the fact that we're spending more money getting less services, and why? What pet projects did everybody have on the table? So taking a look at moving forward, out of the 60 almost billion dollars, there was almost a billion dollars worth of cuts. Those cuts directly impact this county. It affects our sheriff's department. I talked to our sheriff last night. He said, don't expect us to house any more prisoners, bad guys and bad girls, because we don't have the money. It affected autism, which incidentally was kind of coincidental. On the same day the veto went down, Trump is signing for autism. Was that by coincidence, accident, or what? And it affects our charter schools, because now the families are saying, my children have these alternative schools but as a result, I won't be able to deliver my child to school because the money's not going to be there. Up in the north end, the same way, not just here in the south. In addition, it affected our colleges. Some of these kids aren't going to have the money to go to college next month, and they don't know how to pay for it because parents don't have the money. These cuts are serious, and they're, they're not sincere to the essence of the people that are on the backs of the hardworking Michiganders that we serve. So if you feel threatened, if you feel offended, don't worry. Take a telephone out, a pen, and write your governor. Write my governor and say, I really wish you would consider thinking about what you did. Because if it was all about the damn roads, then just veto that line item and let's get it forward then. Nobody wants to be taxed. Nobody wants to get any more on the gas pump. But at the end of the day, Somebody has to continue the solutions because otherwise we're riding on the damn roads that are busted. It's disingenuous to a taxpayer and it's disingenuous to Southeast Michigan where we put the most money in. Until the day I leave the legislature, Public Act 51 is 70 years old. That's how we fund our roads. I urged the county commissioners last week. I'm urging every one of you to understand it because it needs to be changed by a ballot proposal. It hasn't been changed in 70 years, and it won't be. Unfortunately, they always put a chairman from the north end, which is all the way up north. How do you go and take a bill up that's going to give you less when you go home? It's impossible. 
And every damn legislator before me understands me and understood that we needed a ballot proposal a long time ago. We pick up 38 cents of every dollar on our registration fees. That means when you paid your tax, your birthday tax, they call it, every single year to get that little piece of paper to stick on a tab, on a, on a plate, we pick up 38 cents of every dollar. I want you to realize how many people live down here. We have about 950,000 people here in Macomb County. We have about 1.3 in Wayne and 1.2 in Oakland. We make up almost half this damn state. But at the same time, we get 38 cents on a dollar. So I want you to realize what can be done. If you pick up two more counties, like Genesee and Kent, you got half the population of the state, you put it on the ballot, you kick it through the end zone, and guess what? At the end of the day, it takes two-thirds of the legislature to change that vote of the people. It ain't never going to happen. And once and for all, we win on the funding of our roads. So bring it back to whoever you belong to and indicate that there is a plan out there to change 51. It just has to go to the ballot. How much is that, Lacito? Oh, it's about $10 million. How do you know that? They did it with marijuana. They passed it. They did it with the, the, the uh, redistricting, which Barb's right. What do we have to do? We need to report the census of every person that lives in this county because that's where the money flows. If you're there, we pay you. If you're not, you didn't exist, there's no money for you. So at the end of the day, what do we do? We get everybody on board from Wayne, Oakland, Macomb. We have a coalition and we put it up for the voters. There's no way up north can beat us then because we have the votes. We have it in the legislature. If it went up tomorrow, we would be able to change Public Act 51 the way we fund our roads. But we can't do it when a chairperson is intentionally, maliciously, willfully, and not by design and not by accident. They're put there because they hold back 51 to get the money up north. They go by the lane mile. Lane mile. There's a lot of lane mile after you get out of Bay City. It just keeps going. We got 12 lanes on M59 that bring us down here. We only get paid for one. So you think about it. The cheating is done, I think. Somebody's got to take the stance and be a good steward of governing. And let's get it up on the ballot. We all win. As far as the other cuts and everything else, here's what happens. The governor and the leadership, the quadrant they call it, they got to get together and uh, eventually do something. According to the leadership, they said the budget's done. That's not going to help in another 30 days. We either have to do a veto override, which means put the damn thing up there and see where everybody's at, and we need two-thirds of the state house and two-thirds of the Senate to override the governor's vetoes on those line items. Those line items equal about a billion dollars, and they really do hurt Macomb. There's no, no doubt about it. Nobody can deny it. If we get the override, great. Then we win. What happens if we don't? How do you go ahead and give the money to the students, the autism? How do you go ahead and tell Tony Wickersham, our sheriff, where's it going to come from? These are the real deals that are going down. And I got to tell you, I'm trying to still figure out why those cuts were made. I don't think that that really satisfied my curiosity. She said to get us at the table. We were at the table. She got up and left. Make no mistakes about it. All summer long, your legislators, your legislators from Macomb County, were up there, both in the House and the Senate. They were sitting at tables to come up with ideas not to tax people. Because public, uh, uh, prop, prop one was it, Barb, went down miserably, 80-something percent in this county. So I hope that at the end of the day, even that $400 million that was in the budget to go to roads that got stricken as part of a veto, that probably would have helped out with a few more orange barrels that we all hate. But at the end of the day, don't you think you've got to change the formula first and foremost before you go ahead and fund the damn roads? Because if I'm going to get cheated, I'm going to be a big no. Why give away 62 cents on a dollar to somewhere else when I need it back home here for me and my family. I'll be kind, so I'll let you go. But I enjoyed the time. <laughs> I want to thank you again, Macomb Chamber. You've always been in my heart. I'm a, uh, the law firm's still a member. 
And I want to tell you that I truly enjoy doing what I'm doing, and that's making a voice here for Macomb County. I want to say it is very humbling, but also it's an honor to serve in the legislature. It's a cast of characters with no plot. <laughs> so stay tuned, everyone. I love this county. I love the people. And I love the friendships I've had with all of you. Thank you very much, Barb, and the county. Thank you, Senator. And to hear from what's going on in the county, please welcome Chief County Ex Executive, <laughs> Mark Delden. <laughs> Whatever. All right, thank you. Good morning. I get called a lot of things. Um, I, I am the other Mark. Um, I'm Mark Delden. Um, my boss also had some competing events uh, this morning, uh, but however, he drew the short straw and I got to come here. So I want to thank the mayor and the city commission um, uh, for doing a phenomenal job and, and thank you, mayor, for highlighting uh, the things that you did this morning. Um, I, I was born and raised and still live within five miles of where I'm standing. Born and raised in St. Clair Shores and eight years ago we moved all the way to Harrison Township. I've driven through this, uh, this city uh, many, many times over my life, but I've never worked here until the last eight and a half years. And I'm proud to call uh, Mount Clemens uh, uh, my home for uh, about half of my waking hours anyway. So um, this town has a lot of charm. And uh, you should be very proud, and I am, I am uh, enthused by the history of, of this great town. I did want to take a minute to uh, introduce the newest addition to Mark Hackle's staff just about um, eight months ago. Uh, Vicki Wolber is, has, was appointed deputy, um, uh, deputy county executive. Uh, Vicki is not new to the county. She's been here over 20 years, and, and I think for all of that time has led the emergency management uh, division of, uh, of county government. So uh, her wealth of knowledge and her reputation precedes her, and we're happy to have her on our team. Uh, you can sleep well at night knowing that last Friday the county executive submitted his ninth consecutive balanced budget uh, to the Board of Commissioners. Uh, budget talks will uh, begin uh, starting next week, and uh, it, it, they're on track to have an adopted budget for the 2020 year um, sometime in November. I can assure you that, that those talks will go much smoother than they are at the state level right now. Um, one of the things, and I'll, I'll close here in just a minute. I know everybody wants to... Uh, uh, is anxious to get back to work. Um, <laughs> one of the things that's really important to our executive is relationships, because without relationships, you can't get anything done. Um, you can have the best minds uh, in this room, but if we don't have respect for each other and we can't build a, a relationship, if we can't communicate with each other, it doesn't matter how much talent's in the room, we're not going to get anything done. Uh, Mark Hackle is really proud of the relationship that he's been able to um, nurture and, cult and cultivate, not only with Mayor Dempsey, but with all the mayors, township supervisors, and village presidents in this county. That's how you get stuff done. And getting along and respecting each other doesn't cost money. Um, you can get a lot done without that. Mark is really proud of the relationship that he has built with Public Works Commissioner Candace Miller. I wish she was here today, but I know that uh, you will pass that information on to her. Um, there is a perfect example of when you have a good relationship, you can get a lot done. And our office and Commissioner Miller's office have teamed up in the last almost three years now and have done incredible work in Commissioner uh, Miller's desire to uh, have clean water um, every single day um, is showing. Uh, the budget that we're submitting uh, to the Board of Commissioners um, has $2 million in it appropriated um, uh, for a project that Commissioner Miller has uh, to I increase um, sewer overflows, to decrease sewer overflows over the Chapman Station down in St. Clair Shores. But it's an example like that because there's trust and there's respect uh, that we can get things done. So, um, again, that's very, very important. Uh, Mayor, um, j just our office continues to vow our support. And, and commend the job you and City Commission uh, have done and will continue to do. With that, I thank you. Thank you, Mark. Senator Mike McDonald has just joined us, so I'll invite you up. Do you want to say a few words? Sure. All right. Sure. Senator Mike McDonald. Well, 
Good morning. How was everyone? Last thing I want to do is step on. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so used to it. Sorry about that. Well, I came to Sport Bar. Uh, for those who don't know, I grew up in Mount Clemens. This is my hometown. My parents still live on Wellington Crescent, if anyone's aware of that. I'd love to see this city revitalized. Pete and I are like a team. So anything anybody needs, uh, just let us know. I want to do what's sort of good for Mount Clemens, and I support Bar Dempsey. So thank you. Any questions? Uh, I'll, I'll take some questions if you want. No, nothing? Okay. Gavin, how are you? Good. 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 My friend, Adam Silvagno, who now owns a business here in Mount Clemens. So hopefully everybody can support him. So thank you. Okay, before we let you go, I want to remind you about a couple things coming up with the chamber. On Wednesday, October 9th, there will be a coffee connection at American House East. This is a networking event. And on Monday, October 28th, if you haven't had enough political talk today, you can come to our political hot <laughs> Uh Monday, October 28th at the Ukrainian Cultural Center. That's at 11.30 a.m. with lunch. And it's a, 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 a fun, uh, free-for-all kind of discussion with our, with our elected officials and a uh, chance to hear them answer some questions up close and personal. So I hope you can join us for that. With that, I will wish you a good day, and thank you for your attention. Have a healthy weekend, and go blue and go green. <laughs>